One of the great places to go this summer in Dearborn is the Farmers and Artisans Market. This year features many of your favorite vendors and activities, as well as many new things to see at the market. This year at the market, we do have a number of new vendors, which I am thrilled about. We have a new jam person called Slow's Jam, Detroit-based. We have Corridor Sausage, who makes all Artesian sausages, fresh sausage that are really unique flavors. We have a new pickle person this year called Perkins Pickles. It's a more of a kosher pickle, real kind of crisp, which I think people will be pleased about. So those are a few of the new vendors. We will have our usual ones back again this year, like Zingerman's Creamery, which will have their cheeses, their breads. So I think people really enjoy them. With the great array of produce available, the market wants to show you some great recipes you can create with the products you buy. One thing that we are having this year that's a little, a little bit different is chefs at the market were using the individuals that are chefs at the Henry Ford. They will come and do a demo and we'll publicize this and they will use items that different vendors are bringing to the market to sell. The chef from the Henry, the hotel will also be coming, plus chefs from different restaurants here in Dearborn. Another new aspect of the market is the community supported agriculture which gives market goers the opportunity to win a box of local produce. Genevieve Vang from Bangkok 96 has donated three CSA shares. And CSA refers to Community Supported Agriculture. So every week, Living Stones will be delivering the three shares to the market. Then these three shares are gonna be raffled off every week. So the public that will come each week to shop, no matter whether it's a child or a senior citizen, can drop their name, telephone number, email in a box, and then we'll draw them. And the following week, they'll come back and pick up those three shares. Every week, it might be a different variety of produce. So it's a mutual effort between Bangkok 96, Living Stones, and also the market. So it's another incentive to get the public to come and enjoy the market. The CSA shares are just one example of the market's mission to bring the community together and support local farms and businesses. The main reason to come here is really to be part of a very positive and neighborhood activity. You will be able to buy locally and support the person that has grown whatever you're buying or has made it. You can talk to that vendor and say, okay, where did this come from? If you grew the asparagus, when did you pick it? Did you pick it last night? Did you pick it this morning? So in other words, you can have a different, real interchange with the person that is growing and selling that item. You're supporting the area that you live in, that you're building up what we need here in the city of Dearborn. You're having people come in who don't necessarily live in Dearborn, and they can see what a vibrant, active, wonderful group of people who live here and that support whatever is going on on a Friday morning. The Farmers and Artisans Market is going on every Friday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. from now until October 26th behind the Bryant Branch Library. To learn more about the market, visit them online at DearbornFarmersArtisansMarket.com. In April, the cities of Dearborn and Dearborn Heights Converge at the Henry Hotel for one of the Chamber's biggest events of the year. We've had a, a business recognition event for a number of years and we've rebranded the uh, business recognition event into the Business Recognition Awards Ceremony and Expo, B-R-A-C-E, BRACE for short. And this is our signature event of the year. We have 38 businesses with booths displaying their services and products. We've got over 300 people attending the event and we recognize the milestones for the businesses in the area in terms of their anniversaries, as well as give out a series of awards to longtime businesses and to people that really make a difference in the area. An integration between Dearborn and Dearborn Heights has made the chamber more beneficial to the communities they serve and has made this event even bigger and better. We felt we had a lot of strengths and weaknesses that working together would be improved and the Dearborn Heights Chamber works well with small businesses and most of the members are small business members and 
the Dearborn Chamber had a lot of large businesses that we felt by integrating them together we could form a better partnership. We're a two and a half year overnight success in terms of uh, an integration. Uh, it started off as just a discussion between a couple of folks and kind of mushroom from there and we work very hard together. The boards of both chambers form committees to study every aspect of how we operate and it really was a marriage that allowed us to capitalize on our various strengths. I think our Dearborn Chamber has always had a series of programs and uh, support from large businesses and our weakness was that uh, although we have many small businesses in our chamber, we really weren't reaching out to those mom and pop businesses and storefronts and other small businesses. And the Dearborn Heights Chamber is wonderful in that regard. They've got a tremendous outreach program within their community and we're actually tapping the former director of Dearborn Heights to be our new director of small business development. So we're hoping that uh, by combining those strengths it's going to be much better for everyone and the fact of the matter is geographically Dearborn Heights wraps right around Dearborn like a great big C so we're simply completing the donut and uh, getting us all together so we're, we're really looking forward to it. This year the Chamber honored several deserving businesses and business owners that helped the Dearborn and Dearborn Heights communities continue to grow and thrive. We are excited to acknowledge and honor Henry Ford Medical Center for their commitment to Dearborn and their development in our area. Their expansion is a wonderful contribution to the city of Dearborn, it creates jobs and brings really great services to the area. Genevieve Vang was chosen as our Business Leader of the Year because of her extraordinary service to the community, her great leadership, and her vision to create a more diversified business through her new frozen food line, Thai Feast. Genevieve Vang is a wonderful supporter of many nonprofit organizations in the community, and we are so thankful that she's here to accept this honor today. The Glass Academy was chosen as our Small Business of the Year because they've grown tremendously in recent years and they've really become a cultural destination for art enthusiasts across the region. Both Chris Nordine and Michelle Plazinski have bridged that gap between an artist and a business owner to develop a wonderful, thriving business at the Glass Academy. Through Brace, the Dearborn and Dearborn Heights Chamber of Commerce continue to recognize and support businesses within the community. We know at the Chamber of Commerce that small business drives the economy and it creates jobs. So it's really important that we take time to acknowledge the tremendous efforts and vision of the entrepreneurs, not only our chamber members, but throughout the city. Recently at the University of Michigan Dearborn campus, a fundraiser was held that focused on environmental education. Today's fundraiser is called Pancakes for the Planet. This is the first time that we are offering this event open to the public. We based this event on another similar one called Pancakes for Parkinson's, which was originated at the uh, University of Virginia by a uh, student group. And it was a fundraiser for Parkinson's research. And so we decided to uh, sort of replicate it here. Uh, we at our campus in the University of Michigan Dearborn have a sugar bush. And in our sugar bush, every spring, we offer programs for the public and for local schools for collecting maple syrup. So we thought, why not use that maple syrup and uh, use that as a basis for an event to use for a fundraiser to support local outdoor environmental education initiatives in the region. The event was a collaborative effort between several organizations from the university and involved many student volunteers. Today's event is sponsored by three principal groups. Um, the group that I represent is called the Environmental Interpretive Center at the University of Michigan Dearborn, where we offer um, free educational programs to the public on the environment. Uh, also joining us is CIVIC, uh, which is another student-led organization on our campus. And then lastly, uh, SEA, which is the Student Environmental Association. It's a group of students who are interested and concerned about the environment and environmental stewardship. And so most of the volunteers that you'll see at today's event are actually students from the University of Michigan Dearborn. My current position as volunteer coordinator, I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA, so I have to do a year-long project. Um, and as part of that, I knew I wanted to do something relating to environmental sustainability, so partnering with the Environmental Interpretive Center um, seemed like a logical option, and doing a fundraiser um, was something that both of us were really passionate about, so we really collaborated to plan this event. All of the proceeds from Pancakes for the Planet went to support local children's outdoor environmental education. 
This education can have many benefits for both kids and adults. When kids are outdoors learning about the environment, they become more confident, they have a uh, larger sense of self-esteem, they also tend to uh, become more independent. Uh, while becoming more independent though, they also learn about teamwork. Uh, they develop in a very strong environmental ethic. There have been numerous studies that have shown that students who are interested and get involved in outdoor environmental education are less prone to be bullied or to do bullying, uh, that they have greater attention spans, that their performance in school is enhanced. Um, so there are all sorts of reasons for getting kids outdoors. So anything that we can do to promote and get kids outdoors, we're going to try our best to, to achieve that. I think it's really important here in an urban setting to keep um, outdoor education a part of kids' lives, adults' lives too, um, and especially I think those programs tend to be getting cut from schools, so I think making that a priority still in the education system is important. To learn more about the Environmental Interpretive Center and the many other organizations at U of M Dearborn, visit umd.umich.edu. Oakwood Hospital and Medical Center has always been at the forefront of implementing new technologies and continues to do so with the new EPIC electronic medical record system. Well, the name is EPIC. We are going to go live in August of uh, this year. EPIC is basically uh, a physician-oriented or at least medically-oriented uh, type of electronic device. Uh, the objective uh, of the EPIC is actually better and efficient patient care. Doctors will be in charge of the chart, which is going to disappear, by the way. It's electronically going to be there in conjunction with the nurses, communication with other services like the physical therapist, respiratory therapist, and other consultants in the, in the care of the patient. There is also the dynamic of the evidence-based uh, order set that we actually incorporated there. So on a day-to-day -day basis, we have a communication that this is the right thing to do at the right time in terms of addressing patient's uh, care and delivery. This new technology will integrate several areas of patient care into one system, making care more efficient and safer. It's basically two, two, several things. We will have the orders, we have the medication consolidation, which will be seen by the physician and also by the nurses at the same time communicate with pharmacy in order for us to make sure that there is no duplications, there is no counteraction or contradictions in terms of uh, delivery of medications. And also there will be some warning signs that is going to be red flagged by the physician if there is uh, allergies, for example, and things like that. Oakwood is the first healthcare system in the state to transition to the EPIC software EMR management system, which is just one more step that this healthcare center is taking towards improving patient safety. This is going to be great. As a matter of fact, if I may say, I think Oakwood has got an EPIC in order for us to be one of the best, I would say, not only in the state, but also in the country, because this is the future of medicine. Everything is going to be electronic and there will be communications from one physician to the other. From the, from the doctor's office to the hospital and so forth. We will be able to track between physicians to physicians in terms of what kind of care is being delivered and are there missing, say, piece of orders that we need to take care of the patient's disease entity itself. With new technology and efficient and safer patient care, Oakwood will continue to provide top-notch care that patients have come to expect and deserve. We have better care open now. It's going to be much better once we deliver the EPIC program.